Hi, this is Rochelle at Scrapcraftastic, and today I'm going to show you how to make a clear traveler's notebook using this clear vinyl that you can get from the craft store. I got mine from Joanne, and I think I got the 16 gauge, which is a little too thin, and I think I went back and got 20 gauge. I got the highest gauge that they sell. It might have been 20, 22, something like that. I'm sorry, I don't remember the exact gauge. But a heavier, it was the heavier weight vinyl. Um, I thought about this when I purchased this clear A5 a few weeks ago. And I was like, I could make a traveler's notebook with that. It's, just like using any other material um, and I didn't see any traveler's notebooks made out of the clear vinyl so this is the first one that I made I did I never did go back and put the the closure band on and I'll probably go ahead and do that now that I have some more white elastics to use and yeah it has four bands but you know you can always use a jump band and add more you can make it whatever size you want I also made this pocket size and as you can see I used the eyelets and I did the closure on this one I also have a standard size started here and I used a, like a peachy rose colored um, eyelet on this one and I haven't done the strings yet I think I want to order some different color elastics for these and I mean you can use these are great just to put in your purse um, because you don't have to worry about this getting dirty or scratching if you worry about your leather scratching it's also a great idea for storing your used inserts if you keep your inserts this is a really cool idea for just storing them and you can get a yard uh, vinyl is very affordable especially with a coupon if you if you're getting it from Joanne and you can make multiple notebooks the only other thing that you need is a way to set the eyelets if you choose to use eyelets the elastic bands and a way to cut and and measure so I'm gonna show you how to make one today real quick and I think I'm going to make another B6 now let me tell you about the sizing of these if you'll need to know the size of the inserts that you're using so for example these inserts for a B6 are approximately 5 by 7 I'm going to take the width of my insert and double it so 5 by 7 5 is the width so 5 plus 5 is 10 then I'm going to add in an inch for the margin or overlay you need a half an inch overlay on each side so that totals an inch so we got 10 so far we're adding another inch for our overlay or our margin of the cover so that gives us 11 then we need to decide how wide we want our spine I've been just doing a basic 1 inch spine so we've already got 11 we're going to add one more inch for our spine so that's 12 so i'll need to cut my piece of vinyl at 12 inches wide as far as the height you just add an additional half inch for your height so these inserts are seven inches in height i'm just adding a half inch and i'll cut it at seven and a half inches that leaves me a quarter of an inch at the top and a quarter of an inch at the bottom of margin space so I hope that makes sense so basically you just double the width of the insert add whatever amount you want for your spine add an inch for your margin area and that's how wide you need to cut your piece of vinyl for the height it's the height of the insert plus a half an inch so I'll try to write that out in the description below and you can use that same formula for 
any size traveler's notebook. So basically all you need to know is the size of the insert that you want to use. And then you can go from there. So like I said, I'm going to do a 5 by 7 And this is the heavier weight vinyl that I purchased. And I just kind of rolled it up because it comes in these really long sheets. So I just cut a piece off. I bought a yard and this isn't even putting a dent in the yard that I bought. So I'm just going to cut a piece off bigger than what I actually need. So that I, I'm going to cut it a little bit bigger so that I can... Um, have room to square it off and I don't want to you know I want to have to make sure that I'm cutting it square so I'm probably cutting more much more than I need but it's better to be safe than sorry so now I'm just going to decide how I'm going to square that with square this off I think this is my straightest edge so this is the edge I'm going to use in my paper trimmer and yes I'm going to use a paper trimmer to do this I just want to make sure I have a straight edge to start with so if I want it 12 inches wide I'm just going to go a little over okay. I'm just going to square this up we have this side cut so hopefully we have a square edge on this side it's really hard to show this um, process, but I'm going to do my best. So I'm just trimming it down, like I said, to the size that I need it. So it's going to be 12 by 7 and a half. And trying to make sure everything is pretty square. And you can go just like a little bit over like I just did. I just like to give myself a little bit of cushion in case I have to come back and trim some more. But not too much. Okay, so we have our 12 by 7 piece of clear vinyl. And what I do from here is I fold it in half to find my center. And that also shows me if I got a good straight cut, which I did for the most part. And I mean, you can put a little crease in this if you want. I wouldn't press down too hard, but the crease will just rub out. So I'm going to mark at the top about a quarter of an inch from the top where the center is with a Sharpie pen. I'm going to do the same thing at the bottom on the fold. Then I'm going to fold it again this way in half to find my center for my closure band. And I'm just going to mark that corner with the Sharpie. So hopefully you can see all of that. So I've marked on the end here in the center and then on the end here all of that on the fold okay so now I'm going to use one side of this and I'm just going to line my ruler up and I'm going to go one two three eighths of an inch on either side of my center 
So this is where I want my holes to be for my eyelets. Now, now I started out using this eyelet setter and punch from We Are Memory Keepers and it works great until you get to the center punch. As you can see, it's not long enough to reach. It still works great to punch for the, the edges and to set eyelets, but I did finally invest in the long arm version of the Crocodile. It's a Crocodile 2 and in my opinion this one sets eyelets much better than the handheld one. I had less trouble trying to figure out how to set the eyelets than I did with this one and maybe because I didn't read all the directions for this one but even when I went back and read the directions my eyelets would sometimes be rough on the back side of the eyelet and with this so far I haven't had that issue now even though I've already marked here the only issue I've had let me go back to this the only issue I've had with this is forgetting to move this dial here this is what tells it whether you're setting an eyelet or if you're punching a hole for the for a 1 8 inch eyelet or a 3 16 inch eyelet so you have to make sure this is in the right place I messed up I was trying to set an eyelet and had not moved this button and ended up punching a, another hole in my vinyl so but I learned my lesson hopefully I won't forget again but here's another way that I have done this measure of where to put those holes so instead of having to measure on both ends even though I've already put a dot in the center on the other side or on the other end of this if I line up my vinyl and take a binder clip to hold it together the way I want it to be so I'm going to do the same on this side this is a quicker way with less measuring to do this you just have to make sure you have everything lined up properly Binder clip open. So I'm going to hold these two and then I can use, I'm going to rub off the mark I made. So now I can punch my holes for both ends at the same time and not have to measure back and forth, back and forth. So let's put this on. Do I want 316 or 1 8? I bought these. Um, eyelets from a booth at Scrapbook Expo. So I'm going to try these and see how good these are. I was a little skeptical about them. So I'm going to try these and these are the 3 sixteenths of an inch. Those are a little big but we're going to try it. Okay so I'm just going to put this on the 3 sixteenth inch hole. Then I'm going to punch my holes based on where my markings are. And those are really big holes. <laughs> um, I'm going to move over just a little bit because I'm using a bigger eyelet. So I'm going to punch on the edge of my mark. Hopefully that will give me enough room for my eyelid. Okay. So now these are the holes. Those are awfully big holes. Um, they're not lined up quite as nicely as I would want them to be. That's because I had to kind of wing it a little bit. Because, because these eyelets are bigger and I don't have enough smaller eyelets to do what I want to do. So I'm just going to set these in here and see what they look like. Okay, it doesn't look too bad. It's a little off, but not too bad. Okay, so I need to look at where I need to set this. This is a little box that I keep my eyelids in. 
so I do see I'm running low on the smaller eyelets. I have plenty of big ones. So this is the instructions that came. Okay, this is the big bite. I can't remember the actual name, but I need to set these pieces to the eyelet that I'm using. So I think I'm just using a regular 3 16th eyelet. So the top needs to be set to letter A. And I doubt you'll be able to see the letters on these, but there is a letter engraved into this plastic part here. So I'm going to put A going down. And then the bottom one needs to be set to number one. So this is number one. So you can flip those around and set where you need them set. Let's put that back. Okay. So now I'm just going to put my eyelet in here. See, I almost did it again. Let me go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and punch that center hole too. And then I'm going to move <laughs> this. slide this up so we make sure we're doing our um, setting our eyelets instead of punching an additional hole in our vinyl. So I'm just going to place the eyelet in the hole then I'm going to sit this on this platform right up under those two that I just adjusted and squeeze. I'm not liking that. Okay, these eyelets are not the best. <laughs> okay, I'm going to put another one in and squeeze. So once I've done that, I'm going to go back and round my corners. I think I'm just going to do one at a time. And I'm just using the one half inch corner rounder to round my corners. And there it is. All I have to do is add the strings and add my inserts. So since I use these gold eyelets, which I'm really not a fan of for this, they are scratchy on the back. I think they're too big for this. I'll have to find some more eight, eighth of an inch um, eyelets. They used to sell them in Joann's, but I wasn't able to find them. Anyway, so I have this gold elastic cord, and I wish I remembered where I got this from. It's by Simplicity. It says the price is $3.99. And I am really hoping I did not get this from Tuesday morning. I hope I got it from either Joann or uh, Hobby Lobby so that I can get it again because it is coming in quite handy. So I'm just going to thread through the middle one. Whatever end you consider to be your top. Then I'm going to go in through the one beside it. come up at the same one on the side go down the middle then I'm gonna go back up the middle that's one thing about the the bigger um, eyelets it is easier to thread and since I don't want to waste any I try not to cut it before I do the I try not to cut the elastic before I um, string it just so I don't waste any try to make sure I don't waste so as you can see I think it's like an, an 8 that you make as far as weaving it in and out then I'm going to trim it right about there you want it to have to curl just a little bit but you don't want to put these elastics too tight like that. 
it's empty, that's way too tight. So just where it curls just a little bit. So that it'll hold your uh, inserts in there snugly. And don't cut too short. Give yourself some wiggle room. Okay. So I just want to do a little adjusting. So that my knot is more in the middle. For this. Just tie a knot. And you can go back and play with this and adjust how you need, you know. Just don't make your knot too tight at first so that you can play with it if you need to make adjustments. Okay, I don't think that's too tight. Now I'm going to kind of guesstimate the width by measuring double the width of one side or the width of the notebook then I'm just going to feed both ends from the outside to the inside make a knot not too tight in case I need to adjust it and there you have it now it doesn't look as great as a leather uh, notebook would look without anything in it so to make it start you know really looking nice you have to go ahead and put some inserts in and since I need to go back and put the closure on this one I'm going to take these inserts out of here I have quite a few And add them in here just so you can see what it looks like so there it is put the closure band closure on and that is what it looks like once it's all done I think the gold looks really nice and then if you embellish it you could put like a shaker you could even double up on the vinyl, double the vinyl, maybe stitch around it and make a shaker of the whole cover. Um, there's a lot you can do with it, but this is the basics of how you would make it. So that's it. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them below. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you later. Bye.